Hey YouTube, it's Matty J Mania. I'm doing my retro gaming pickups number three. I'm pretty new to YouTube and everything. Um, this will be my third pickup in just a couple weeks. I'm going to try to do them once a week. Um, I know pickup videos are a little bit boring. Um, I'm going to try to think of a way to make them more exciting. Right now I have nothing, so I'm just going to go for the pickups. Um, as those who watch my channel know, I mainly collect Nintendo and Super Nintendo, and that's pretty much what my pickups are. Um, I'm going to start off with just some of, just some games I got uh, at a local store. First one is Bust a Move for Super Nintendo. Um, this game is like a puzzle game. Um, features the like the Bubble Bobble characters. Um, it's just that game where like you have a little ball and you shoot it up and connect to other balls and like it's a puzzle game. It's pretty cool. Didn't have it. Um, I got Ski or Die from the makers of Skate or Die, which is Ultra, I believe. Yes. Um, it also came with the manual and it was two dollars. Um, it's in great condition. It's not the most common game. So, it's also not the best game. Um, I started to play it for a little bit. Um, I don't know. I wasn't really into it. But $2 can't beat a game in this good of condition. That's kind of a little uncommon with the manual. Um, then I got Shadow of the Ninja. Um, I already had the box for this game. Um, it's a uh, Natsume game. I think I'm saying that right. Um, but the game cartridge itself was in really good condition. And I already had the box, like I said. Otherwise, I might have even overlooked this game. Um, but got it, played it. It's okay. Not a bad game. I was just happy to find it in this good of condition when I had an empty box that I got along the way. Um, then I got something that's pretty cool. I've wanted one for a while. And that is a Famicom. Um, it works, has all the hookups and everything. I have a bunch of Famicom games. I have a Famicom converter. It's just the, like the one you find inside of Nintendo games. I think mine was in Hogan's Alley. Um, but I wanted the actual Famicom. I've modded my Super Nintendo, one of them, to play Super Famicom games. So I didn't have anything to play the Famicom on that was reliable. Like the converter's kind of a pain in the butt. Like, cause I like to keep it in like my Hogan's Alley. So, um, like I said, I have about 15 Famicom games already, and this one actually came with um, Ninja Turtles 2, which in Japan, Ninja Turtles 2 is actually a Manhattan project, and I think there might be an extra level or two in it, I'm not exactly sure, started playing it, um, but I got a pretty good deal on this with the Ninja Turtles 2, so I was, like I said, I was really excited to get one, wanted one for a little while. Um, then we get into, oh, here's the uh, Turtles 2, you can see which, like I said, is actually Turtles 3 American. Um, then we start to get into the really cool stuff. The next stuff I'm going to show you, one thing I bought from a game store, it's been like one of my top Super Nintendo games I've wanted for a long time. The other things are, um, I just got all in a trade with one guy who was really into Nintendo 64 stuff and was getting out of Nintendo. And it was good for me because I don't really, I collect Nintendo 64, but I don't like, I'm not as passionate about it, and I don't have as much nostalgic value as I do to Nintendo. So it worked out well for both of us. Um, I assume he was happy, I'm happy, and that's really all that matters in a trade. Um, but before I get to that, I want to show you my Super Nintendo uh, rarity gem that I've been looking for, and that is Hagani. Um, as you can see, the label's beat up. It kind of makes me cry um, that the label's beat up like that, but the price was right. Um, I was really excited to get it. It was like in my top three Super Nintendo games that I needed and wanted. Um, so it was like crossing a big one off the list. I know this game is like crazy expensive. Even with this label damage, it's expensive. Um, but like I said, the price for me on this one was right. Like I was, I couldn't leave it sitting in a retro store in my hometown is what it came down to. Like I knew it was there. I saw it, went home like slept on it and I woke up the next morning and I was just like, I have to have that game, um, even with the damage. Um, so at least I have it now. Maybe I'll get a better copy at some time. Who knows, maybe I won't, it's kind of hard to find. Um, so now here's the Nintendo games. First um, I got was Bases Loaded. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking, like Bases Loaded, big deal. Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking too, but Nintendo Age right now is having a weekly contest and Bases Loaded was the game. So I needed to pick up a copy. I paid a dollar for this copy. Um, 
It's in really good condition. The, the brass on it's great, so I don't care. It was a game I had when I was a kid, too. I used to play this game a lot uh, with my dad, so maybe when I'm playing it, you know, it'll bring back some nostalgia. I've had this game so many times and just have traded it away or put it with lots for Nintendo, that kind of thing, but now that I have it, I'm just going to keep it. It was a buck, you know, whatever. Um, then I got... Flintstones Dino and Hoppy. Um, it's cool. It's great condition. This is probably the weakest of the games I got in this trade. All the games from this point on were in this trade. So I got the Flintstones Dino and Hoppy. Um, Donkey Kong 3. Needed Donkey Kong 3. I think I have all of them now. I got the Junior, the regular Donkey Kong, the Math, um, Classics. Um, Mario is missing on the NES. I have this on the Super Nintendo and or I have Time Machine on the Super Nintendo, but I know the Nintendo one's a little more uncommon than the Super Nintendo one. Um, not really a fan of the game. It's like an educational game. Uh, it's kind of boring, um, especially because I brought it home and like my kids wanted to play it and they were like, oh, Mario, and we started to play it and like my son, I wanted nothing to do with it because it was... Like I said, it was educational, and he can't read, so it really did not do much good for him. Um, then I got Adventure Island 3. This will finish out my Adventure Island now. I have 1 and 2, so pretty pumped to get Adventure Island 3. I like the games. Um, then I got Chiller. I know this game's not common. And this is the uh, gray label one. Um, kind of excited to get this one. Should be cool. I like how... The art on it reminds me of, like, Iron Maiden. Uh, you know, don't know if the, that does that for anyone else, but um, the, the whole thing kind of reminds me of, like, Iron Maiden. Like, the game is Iron Maiden. <laughs> um, I got... I was actually going to get this game in a trade earlier in the week. No, a purchase earlier in the week, and it, the seller flaked on me. Whatever, it happens. It's part of the game. But um, I was... So, you know, it, it always happens this way. Like, when I see a game and, like, it doesn't work out, it always, that same game will pop up, like, again, immediately almost. And that is Batman Return of the Joker. Um, I've never played this game. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I know it's kind of uncommon, kind of hard to find. It's not, like, anything crazy valuable. None of these games I went over so far are, like, crazy valuable or anything like that. But they are rare. They are uncommon. Um, they're just all things I needed for my collection is really what it comes down to. Um, these last three are like the gems of the trade. Um, the first one is Godzilla 2. Um, it does have a little bit of label damage here and it does have a rental sticker on the back, but I can always swap the back of the card out if I need to. Um, this little bit of peeling here doesn't really bother me too much. Um, I was just excited to get it and it's not easy to find that one. Then I know I was talking about it earlier, and that is Mario's Time Machine. He had both of them, so I ended up getting this one, too. Um, I, like I said, I was excited. I know it's not a game that I'm, like, going to be thrilled to play or anything, but as far as, like, collecting, I was excited to have it. And then the last one is the big one. It is Chip and Dale 2. Um, funny enough, this is actually my second copy of Chip and Dale 2. Now, why do I need two copies of Chip and Dale 2? I don't. It was just the trade worked out this way. Um, I would say like the price was right, but again, it was just a straight trade. Um, I did have to get rid of some cool things that I liked, but they were Nintendo 64 things. I can get them back. One thing I had to get rid of was Ogre Battle 64 Complete Mint. Um, and then the rest of the stuff wasn't anything too crazy. Nothing I couldn't get back. So I pretty much got this one for like trade bait, trade purposes. Um, I will be trading it for something. Uh, you know, I need, like, Action 52, and I know this isn't equal to Action 52, but it could help me get there. Um, and there's definitely some other games, you know, maybe two games that I need to get me. I can trade for this. Um, Rescue Rangers 2 is super fun. Don't know if you've ever played it. It's very similar to the first Rescue Rangers, which is awesome and is easily obtainable for anybody. Um, if you don't have that game and you play Nintendo, like, you should own that game. There's no reason you shouldn't. You can get it for, like, ten bucks or less, you know. Um, it's a great game. That and the original DuckTales, I definitely recommend. Well, DuckTales 2 is a lot of fun, like, the original DuckTales is awesome. So, um, 
that's my pickup video for the week. If you can, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. You can leave comments below. Subscribe to my channel. Um, my Twitter uh, link is below. You can follow me on Twitter as well. Um, thanks for watching, and have a good day.